So as an optometrist, one of the most critical measurements that I can get on every single patient is the cup to disc ratio, also known as just the CD ratio. We get this measurement off of the optic nerve head, which is the cable, the high speed in that cable that runs from the eye to the brain. And most of the time when we see large cup to disc ratios, they're going to be consistent with the pathophysiology of glaucoma. But then a lot of times I'll see a large optic nerve head with a large cup to disc ratio that has nothing to do with glaucoma at all. So it begs the question, how in the world do I actually know the difference? Stay tuned to find out. What's going on guys? I'm Dr. Adesola for today. I specialize in sports vision training and glaucoma. If this is your first time on the page, first of all, thanks so much for being here. Feel free to please give us a like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications so you're always made known every time we drop content on the page, okay? Now what we're gonna talk about in today's video is how we can detect the difference between a glaucomatous optic nerve or a large, here's the word, anatomical optic nerve. Now, before we get into that, we gotta talk about what happens in glaucoma altogether. Well, first, if you haven't watched my other videos, go ahead and go in there. I go into depth about what glaucoma is, but it's when you lose your peripheral vision all the way in and it closes in on you like a pinhole due to the damage to the optic nerve. And that damage is usually from eye pressure in the eye being a little bit too elevated and sometimes a lack of blood flow to the nerve itself. Now there's four ways that glaucoma really does its damage to the optic nerve, which can create that large cup to disc ratio that I was talking about in the beginning. So what is a cup to disc ratio? So the cup to disc ratio is there's a disc, which is the outer circle, big circle, and then there's the cup, which is the inner circle. And what we're basically looking at is what is the percentage that this cup makes up of the disc? So if we look at the cup, is this cup 10% of the disc? Is it 20% of the disc? Is it 30%? Is it 40%? Is it 50% of the disc? Is it 70, 80, 90% of the disc? What we're basically trying to see is the larger the percentage of that cup is to the disc, the more worrisome we become of glaucoma because we know that that's where a lot of the damage is done and that's what happens in the damage process of glaucoma, right? And when we see these type of patients that come into our practice with these large cup to disc ratios, they're very suspicious to us. So therefore we'll do additional testing. We'll run an OCT or an optical coherence topographer on them, which will give us this diagnostic information so we can know what type of decision we're gonna make or let us know what kind of damage has already been done. Because like I said before, there's four different ways that glaucoma damages that optic nerve. Now, the first way it damages is neural rim thinning. The rim around the disc will start to thin itself, which will start to give the appearance and start to actually widen out that cup a little bit more. The second way we see damage is what we call notching, which is where a focal area of the cup itself will actually go missing. It'll, it'll, it'll look as if there was a spoon scooped out from the cup itself, which is what we call notching. The third way we can see damage is through asymmetry, where one eye is perfectly normal, but then the other eye is suspiciously large. And now we gotta figure out, is this glaucoma or is it not? And then the fourth way we can see this type of damage, what we call RNFL loss or retinal nerve fiber layer loss or thinning, which is actually where we'll see a loss of tissue in the space around the nerve itself, which will translate to a loss of peripheral vision in the real world. And so now that we know that that's what happens in a glaucomatous optic nerve, so what happens when we see a large cup to this ratio, but it's perfectly healthy? So basically when we run the OCT test on them, what we'll see is the complete opposite. We'll see that there's no neural rim thinning, there's no asymmetry, there's no notching, and there's no RNFL loss. There's no visual field defect, there's nothing. And the pressures are usually perfectly normal. So therefore, those are the things that we'll see to know that this person has an anatomically large optic nerve, which basically means you were just born like that, bro, and it is what it is. But for us, this type of information is very, very critical and key when we're looking at our patients to make sure that we don't 
overdiagnose, underdiagnose, or misdiagnose. Anyway, guys, I hope that this helped and that you learned something. I actually made this video because somebody had asked me this question in the comments and I said, this is actually gonna be a great video for me to make to show the differences between the two. So if you have any other questions like this or anything glaucoma related, feel free to hit the comments, write it down in there, let me know. I'll make a video and try to explain it to the best of my ability to you guys. I'm gonna see you guys on the next one. And as I always say, this is the key of life. Keep your vision clear. See y'all next time. Peace.